We've been in the series for the last couple of weeks uh, talking about whole families. And, and so this morning, uh, I just really believe that as we were seeking uh, just for this week, this weekend, just for, uh, really just you know, bouncing that off the Lord. We have a baptism service. You could share on baptism. You could share, you know, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If any man be in Christ, the old is gone, the new has come. Like he is a new creation. This is what we're celebrating today. God takes it and raises to life, you know, the death, burial, and resurrection. This is baptism. It's the outward sign of what happened inside. You were actually making a declaration. I really think it's one of the keys and the strengths to, for this body to walk after Christ. You know, sometimes we don't get baptized, we don't, we, don't, we don't make a move with this body, and we struggle to really follow, even though our heart, and we're saved, and we're, we're changed, but making that declaration before men is a powerful thing. It's you saying that, as for me and this body, this suit, we are going to serve the Lord, right? And so this is a, a, it's a strength. If you're struggling, you know, um, uh, with, with, you know, trying to keep, in a sense, this body under, I'd ask you, are, have you ever been baptized? I mean, and if you have, then you guess what? The old is gone, the new has come. And so you can declare to yourself, to yourself, that greater is he that's in me and right here in this body than anything I face in the world. So you might have problems with food. It sounds funny. I don't even know why I'm going this way. But food might be an issue for you. And you're saying, I can't, da, 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 I can't. Well, yeah, you can. Because the old is gone, the new is come, and greater is he that's in you. There's all kinds of things that happen in Christ when you're saying, body, yeah. I'm talking about desires. I'm talking about what he puts in you. He says he's the one who gives you both the will and the do to do according to his good pleasure. The ability, the desire and the ability. This this is good stuff. Anyway, we're not going to talk about that. So, praise the Lord. We're going to talk about whole families this morning, and the title of this morning's message is this, A Long Way Off. But before we go there, I'm going to give just a, just a moment of recap. We started, again, uh, really uh, two weeks ago, uh, messages in this series. First one was, we are a family of faith. Talking about if you're going to be a family of faith, we're going to have to learn to resist fear. And the fear is not an emotion, and it's not a feeling. It is a spirit. And so we resist spirit, right, with spirit. So we talked about that. And so in a family, as you're raising your kids and as you're, you know, not just family, we're talking husbands and wives. We're talking about all, the, all of the facets of family. You and I, when fear comes, we're going to have to learn to address it, not just to resist it. We have to speak words because you don't resist spirit like just with physical, right? Remember, the Bible tells us that we don't wrestle against natural things flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of wickedness in heavenly places. This we reminded this, when we're resisting, we have authority over them. We're not like struggling, our contest, or struggle. we're not struggled, like, oh, I can't. No, we have authority over them, the contest, right? Okay, and then, and then the week after that, uh, uh, Joe uh, Costillo, he spoke on communication, and wow, what awesome uh, message on just, uh, we have to learn to, to, to recognize uh, the ambush points the enemy would love to come in and, and mix up our communication. You know, communication is always happening, always. It's just who's doing the talking, right? Who's doing the talking? Sometimes it's your wife, sometimes it's you, sometimes it's she said something or you said something, but we're hearing the complete opposite. Or you say something to your kids, but your kids are hearing something, and we need to roll the channel, Remember what he said? He talked about, hey, roll channel. When, when the enemy, uh, the enemy's always been, like, you know, you remember back in World War II, they, they, they had in, introduced Morse code, right? Or, they, and, and, or maybe it wasn't World War II Morse code, but they had the, um, uh, what was the, the tribe? Uh, Navajo Indians, right? And, and because the enemy was getting their communications, and so they had to bring in this new form of communication that couldn't be intercepted or interrupted because it was that vital. So communication is key, and so uh, and, and if the enemy gets part of your communication, he, he said this. We have this, and he was talking about in military. We have this term where you all you have to do is say roll channel, and I think that would be a good thing for you know maybe you're kind of ah and and just hey, let's roll the channel here, okay? Because because somehow we got off on the wrong. Somehow you're hearing something different. Can we roll channel? Because you're hearing something that I'm not saying, or I'm hearing something. Let's roll the channel. And so we talked a little bit about that last week, and then this week we're going to, um, or really last week, um, uh, we had Brother Nick Cannon here. Gosh, that was so special, special to me, um, an evangelist, but just really the love of God coming out of him. And, um, and so this will be kind of the, the, the start of today's message is really the understanding that we have a father who's not absentee. 
And so while he was speaking and, and teaching, he brought up this verse, and the Lord just began to speak to me uh, along these lines this last week. Um, and it's Luke chapter 10, verse 16. It says this, whoever listens to you listens to me, but whoever rejects you rejects me. Um, uh, that's interesting to say. Jesus is saying, he's, ta- he's sending the disciples out with a message, right? And he says, whoever listens to you listens to me, and whoever rejects me, or re- rejects you rather, rejects me. But whoever rejects me, rejects him who sent me. In other words, here's what he's saying. Ultimately, I've gone ahead. I'm going ahead of you. Don't think you're the first. To, like, I didn't just send you. I've been knocking on the door of their heart. We don't have an absentee father. Why do you, how can he say that if they reject you, they reject me? If they, because he's already been there. No man comes to the father unless he draws him. Right, so he's he's working he's working. So what a what a powerful powerful th- thought uh, um, just to say, wow, God's already gone ahead and he's already been drawn up men. And so um, this morning, uh, this is what I want to say, uh, or this is the title of this morning's message: a long way off, a long way off, a long way off. You're going to find we're going to look at two places it says a long way off this morning, and. Um, it, it actually says this a little bit later in my notes. It, Jesus said, don't say, don't say there's harvest is still a long way off. Don't say that. Or he said, don't say there's still four months to harvest. And he said, instead, lift your eyes. He said, that's now. Don't say. How many of you know when it's a long way off, you can procrastinate? How many of you know when, you, when it's a long way off, you can get distracted? When it's a long way off, um, you can get tired. And we're talking about family this morning, having whole families, okay? Now, don't say it's a long way off because what happens is, is we don't tend to what we're supposed to be tending to. Right. Or we get discouraged because it's not happening yet. We're about to move into, uh, uh, into our house, um, which has been seemingly a long way off. Um, but here we are just a month, a month away. Um, and the, the, how many of you know the final details of a house takes some time, takes some bandwidth, takes a lot to going on. But there was something that was really important to me, uh, and this was a garden. And why is that? Here we are in May, because, it, but the garden's already in. Because I can't harvest there what I didn't do. And so it was important to me because I knew in July I was going to want to go out having, having moved in, having, in a sense, rent through a season and got to another season. And I, was wanting, I knew I'd want to go out and go into the garden and pick a watermelon. You're like, who is this guy talking about watermelon? Like, that was, that's me. I knew that that ministers to me. And if I'm going to have that then, then there's something that i got to do now. And so there's a lot of things that we want to have with our families there, but we're, we, we, it's just a long ways off to us, and so we don't recognize what we need to do now. Or it's, it may be one of these things where, where um, it just seems so far, maybe it's your kids, they seem so far from where your heart would like them to be. You have this desire for your children or your family or your marriage, and it's like your, your marriage, you wanted it to be over here and just like, you know, but it's over here, and it's a long ways off, and so you don't know how to get from here to here, and so you just end up just not doing anything. You don't, don't, know, don't know the steps, in a sense, to get there, to get there, and so we're, we're going to talk about a little bit about that this morning, um, a long way off, so... Um, Man, if you want to know how important something is to God, just look at where the enemy's trying to bring destruction. It's families. And, you know, it's interesting. In, in the Bible, you, God, all, of, all of the Bible is really about family, really creation. Why did God create Adam and Eve? Family. Family. And he, you were created in his image and his likeness. It's, it's interesting. Uh, the, guys will go to work every day. Hard, extra, but why? Because of family. There's people here this morning that would never be in church, or, but because somebody in your family is going to get baptized, you're here. Family. Family is a powerful force. Family is something you'll fight for. And did you know that family is something that God fought for? 
and still fighting for? Don't think that you and I are the only ones that fight for our family. As hard as you would fight for your son or your daughter, God fights for you. This is, a, this is just, sometimes we forget and we miss these moments. And the way that sometimes we fight is just so natural. But God fights, for, uh, he fights even, uh, he doesn't sleep, he doesn't slumber, he doesn't rest. He, he, and he, he, the way he fights is he fights uh, with words. Did you know everything that you and I see has a word behind it? Everything. Everything that you and I see it has a word behind it. And so, uh, just again, recognizing that the, that the Lord, he loves families. The enemy hates families. The Lord loves marriages. But we say it this way, even a church family. You'll find in the Bible, he talks about the household of faith. Well, we have a Schlegel household, right? That's, that's my, that's, those are my sons in our household, a family. You know, his ho- there's a household, God's household of faith. The household of faith. The household of the, the, the Baptists. The household of the Pentecostals, the household uh, 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 of the Presbyterians, the household of the Lutherans. I mean, I'm just saying the household of, of those who call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. The household of faith. Let me say it this way. God's family. Like there's not Jew. There's not Greek. There's no, not male nor female. And yet, and yet. So often, the enemy's working to bring destruction to the family. Bringing destruction to your family, the family, the church. And you know, he does it with words. He does it with words. And words are so powerful. Words are so powerful. It's inter- it, it, words have the ability to separate. We're going to look at that here in just a moment. Let's go to Luke chapter 15, uh, verse 1. And this is uh, Luke 15 is the story, uh, really the parables, uh, of, of the lost, lost coin, the lost sheep, the lost son. But where this parable starts is, is a setting. And the setting right here says, Now the tax collectors and their sinners were all gathered around Jesus. Man, isn't that awesome? Like, can you imagine all the sinners, the tax collectors? The, like, there's just, just like, like you, you're just let's say it this way sons. Daughters, wayward children, crying out, finding, seeking life. They found it. They're sitting at the feet. What is that? What's the response that should be here? Oh, thank you, Lord. But what is the response instead? Let's look at the next verse. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, they muttered. They muttered and they said, man, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So this is just the setting of what's going on. And then Jesus proceeds to talk about a story, right? A story. So uh, words don't just tell a story. This is what we we find. The words also produce fruit. Now, this is is huge. This is huge. Words produce fruit. They don't just tell stories. We're going to read a story, a parable, that wasn't even a real story. But yet somehow we identify with the, the, the story so often. We're going to look at the parable of the lost son or the prodigal son. You may have heard it. And we're going to look at a, a, just, just the, those words and how, my, how many words are in that story or in that scenario. And, and what was the way home for a son that was a long way off? Well, well, how, how, how did it happen? And we're going, to, we're going to look at that. So let's go there. Luke 15, 11 through 32. And I just want to say this uh, before we jump in there. If, if you have a situation in your life, whether it's a son or a marriage or whatever it might be, that isn't where you desire it to be, um, let me just say what's behind the fruit is a word. Or let me say it this way. What you see has a seed. So if your son or your daughter is rebelli- rebelling, rebellious um, in, in some way, it's, there's a seed. There's something that they believe they believe about themselves. There's something that they believe about you. There's something they believe that you said or don't, that you approve or disapprove or don't approve. 
And you're going to see here, even in this story that we're going to read, that, again, let's look at, our, at ourselves as a family. We, if it just, uh, maybe some of you are familiar with this story, but there's two sons, okay? And there's a household. Let me say it this way. There's a family. And have you ever been in a family? Maybe, maybe, maybe you're like the black sheep of the family. Anybody feel like you've been the black sheep of the family? Anybody in here? We got a couple? Okay, that's awesome. You know how that happened? Words. Just words. Well, matter of fact, I got, I got this really cool object lesson. Um, I want to show you the power of words. Uh, let's see here. Drew, can you separate uh, for me all of the blue balls, please? I'm doing this with words. I'm going to have him sit but with words. With words. I'm, di- I'm bringing direction. He, is, he has now categorized... Just because of some words, what he's supposed to do, what he's, what, he's pulling all the blue balls out. He, he's, he's now, he, just, just from words, he recognized what to do. So, man, why can't you be more like, I wish you were, and, and this is where even, even like Facebook and social media can be so treacherous because you see somebody's vacation, words. You see somebody's tr- new truck, words, discontentment, producing. You see somebody's abs and you see your belly. <laughs> and words go, I wonder if my wife, I wonder if you see some girl that in her stuff that, that you know, post pictures or whatever and that and, and your husband's scrolling, and you, you see him stop on the lawnmower ad, but on the same page as the, <laughs> whatever, this girl, he's like looking at bad boys, he's like, he's being a bad boy, I don't know what, <laughs> and words, it's because I don't look like that, because I had words, words matter, words categorize, words classify, Words produce into you and me so often discontentment. This is where we're looking for approval or acceptance. In churches, you'll see this the same way. You'll see like somebody say, well, how come we didn't sing this song? Or I wish we had it like that. And so words produce discontentment, but ultimately that discontentment leads to disconnection. When you don't feel like, like, like you're valued the way that you want to be, if you're a son or a daughter and you're wor- working for your mo- mom and your dad's approval, somebody's approval, you, 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 you're not content. You're looking for that approval because you heard a word that you're not this or, you don't, or there was a look that said something or there was whatever and you're looking, you're, you're so desiring and longing for that, but because you can't have that, what ends up so many times happening is we just disconnect. We fade, we fall apart. It happens, in, and this is the way the enemy works. He works with words. So as we started into this story, I wanted to just kind of lay a little bit of that, that thought process because we have a son that asks for everything, and we have a son that served his dad every day of his life and never made one mistake. We've got two different kids here. we got sons here. We say we have brothers here. We have a father here. What... Were, were, was he the black sheep before he left home? Why did he leave home? What words had gotten in, whether it was from... These, these are real things. There was something that he believed he needed something to go make a name for himself. I'm going to prove, maybe, maybe you, again, words paint a story, right? But they also produce fruit. So we know that his actions were because there was something that he believed. According to this story, all right? So let's, let's look here. Jesus can, uh, continued after, again, the parable of the lost coin, lost, lost, lost sheep. There was a man who had two sons. Uh, the younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate so that he divided his property between them. I'm going to read it from the screen, verse 13. Not long after that, the younger son got together all that he had and set off for a distant country, and there he squandered his wealth in a wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine there was a severe, in the whole country, and he began to be in need. 
Okay? And so, so he went and he hired himself out to a citizen of that country. He sent him to the fields to feed his pigs. All right? Long, uh, he longed to fill his stomach with the pods or the food that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything to eat. So when he came to his senses, he said, now I just want you to put in this, this picture here, he said to himself, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. Here he's out working in the field. Anybody talk to themselves? How many of you know, like, when he's talking to himself, this is days, weeks. This is just, this absolutely stinks. It's just the pigs stink, nothing to eat, just, <sighs> he's talking to himself, talking to himself. What are you saying to yourself? What are you saying to yourself? So many times there's words that aren't, there weren't words that dad said, they're words that you said. And your words are producing a pretty sloppy life, a pretty not so desirable life. My self talk, self talk, self talk, self talk, self talk. I'm just fat, I'm just ugly. I'm just, what, what, what are the words? Yeah. Producing something. So he's talking to himself, but he's saying, I, 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 this, is, this is terrible. My, my father's house, I, I could just go back and be a servant. So he goes on to the next verse here, uh, go to the next verse, and he says, I'm going to set back out and go to my father, and here's what I'm going to say to him. I'm going to say, I'm home. No, I'm going to say, no, no, what am I going to say? Um, how many of you know that this is a big deal right here? What are you going to say to dad when you lost all that he worked so hard for? What are you going to say to dad? Like, think about this. What are you going to say? Because he was thinking to himself, I need to go back. I can't go back. I can't go back. If I go back, you know, I, I always do everything wrong anyway. They already think I'm a, a worthless nobody. They think that probably I was just out here doing all this all bad stuff. They don't even know. I, what, I, I got stole from there. I found myself in that place. I didn't want to be there, but she was looking so good. And I tried to run, but then she grabbed me. And then it just, you know, like I really wanted to do it right. Like, but they won't believe me. Like, how can I go back and tell them that, that I really was trying to do right, and I just fell again, and they don't believe me? What am I going to say? Uh, you know what? I'll, 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 here's what I can do. I can just be, I can no longer be his son. I just, they, they think I just, everything happened because I was just a squander, but it was a famine. There was some hardships in my life. There was a story that hit me that they weren't a part of. Over there, they weren't in the land that I was in where the famine was. And, and I, I had a decision to make, and I just seemed like that was the way to take. And so I made that decision, but now I just, I'm in the slop of pigs, and I don't like it here, and I don't want it here. And my dad trained me, and my mom, but I don't know how to go back. I don't know how to go back. And so there's this conversation, internal conversation, that keeps people so often so much longer than just a few verses. So much longer. Until they come to themselves and say, I could just maybe be a slave. I'm just a worthless nobody, in a sense, at this time. I'm going to lower my class. I'm going to lower my value so that I could just maybe, maybe, just maybe, be accepted again. And so he goes back, and, and I love this next, this next passage here. Um, he's, he says, so I'm, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. So he's got all this planned. Um, make me like one of your hired servants. Okay? So he got up and he went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, again, this is that a long way off. While he was still a long way off, uh, his father saw him. And was filled with compassion for him. And he ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. Now, I just want to just pause here for a moment. Anybody, uh, just the other day, we, just maybe two days ago, we were upstairs um, in our new place. And we were looking out the window. And way off in the distance, we're like, what is that over there? And we're like, uh, I, think that's a, I think that's a deer. We were looking just, oh, isn't that pretty? That's yeah, so pretty. Oh, there's a deer over there. And then the then the, then the, the Consensus was, is that a deer? Or is that a dog? No, I think that's a dog. No, no, I think that's a raccoon. No, no, no. Nope. And then it stuck its head up, right? And you're like, oh, no, that's a deer. That's a deer, right? Because it was a long way off. How many of you have husbands that are driving down the road and they're like, oh, deer, right? Anybody? Okay. Uh, that's me, right? Okay. And you're like, oh, and it's a stump, right? But it's a long way off, so they don't know. I saw a deer. I saw a deer. It was a 10-point buck. I don't know about you. 
Sorry, he's back there on the right. Sorry, we can't turn around, you know. How many of you know, every time you see a deer, it's a buck too, right? Like, he's like, oh, it's a buck, turn around. That, oh, never mind, that one's, all right. But a long way off. How many times did maybe he see the mailman and run? Oh, oh. Because see, like, I could see Joe. I could see Ben. I could see, I, I, I could see the pain. I could see all, way out there. You know, y'all kind of just got phalanges and, you know. The cranium, like until you get close, you're just a silhouette. How can you see a sun a long way off? Hope. Hope. What is hope? Against hope, you can believe in hope. See, hope holds some words in its heart. Hope holds something, uh, and it's not so far off. See, he didn't see his son way off in a distant country. He saw his son coming close. And so he ran out to meet him. But how many times do you think that this, I I don't know. I mean, this is just something, a story the Lord tells, Jesus tells people saying that when somebody's coming home, if there's a sinner or a tax collector or whatever, what's what's your response where somebody's at? Oh, look at that sinner. He's just there again. You know, he's just going to be in the bar again. I don't know why he's even in church today or blah, blah. Like, where's, where's your response? What's my response towards our family, towards our children? What's our response? Because uh, it's not as long, uh, as far off as we think. So he goes on to say this and says, um, uh, so, so he got a, his son said to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven, against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. And he's like, you know what? You're right, but today we're going to do something different. No, his father didn't even acknowledge that. Didn't even acknowledge that. But the father said to his servants, quick, bring the best robe, put it on him, put a ring on his finger, and sandals on his feet for my son. Or bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let's, let's have a feast to celebrate. For my son of mine was dead and is alive again. He lo- was lost and is found, so they began to celebrate. Wow, how cool is that? Wow, what, just a, my son's home. And, and you know this, maybe the rest of the story. Meanwhile, the older brother was in the field. When he came, he heard the, the dancing, music. Came, and, and so he called one of the servants and said, what's going on over there? And... His brother said, uh, well, your father has killed a calf because he has him back, his son, save your brother. John's home. What? John? And he's partying with him? Next, next verse. The older brother became angry, refused to go in, so his father went out to meet him. Isn't that interesting? Father went out to meet him. Do we go out? Or do we make our, them come to us? When you're ready, you can come to me and apologize. When you're ready, this is, we're talking about whole families here. Remember last week or two weeks ago, we're talking about what do you really want in this communication? Like, what do you really want? You want to be right? What do you really want? Or do you want it right? Because if you want it right, there's times your son won't come to you. You're going to have to go to their room. If you want it right, you, there's times that, that, that they're not coming to apologize for raising their voice or for whatever it might be. You're going to have to go to them and say, you know, I don't, I don't like what's going on here. I just want you to know I love you. Well, we're not addressing all the other things. We're, we're, we're declaring something else. See, here's the, let's, let's keep it going. We'll read to the end. Um, he said, look, look, all these years I've been slaying a slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders, yet you never gave me a young goat so I could come celebrate with my friends. But when, when this son of yours, it's his brother. Again, this is these words right here paint a picture of a childhood, of separation, of down the nose, and the son, your son, my brother. No relationship. Measuring. Classification. Oh, classification. Classification. How does classification happen? Why are you the black sheep? Words. Because a word you heard, whether they were said by mom or dad, and you know, or somebody else, or a teacher, or somebody in the pew. You received their words as authority in your life. Yet your words are the authority over your life. But, but your words also are a planting. 
So I can plant something for, see, there's, there's going to be watermelons in my garden that Caleb can go pick, my youngest son, because cause it's my planting. So let's, let's keep going here. So let's go to the end of this. So, but when your son of yours has squandered your property uh, with prostitutes, come home and you kill the fattened calf for him. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Did they have TikTok and FaceTime? And uh, they probably had FaceTime where, like, he's like, oh, yo, John, what's up? Oh, you know, just shooting it up with these harlots over here on another distant country. <laughs> like, just, yo, oh, he probably just dialed them up real quick. Yo, YOLO, hey, you know? What, I, or, like, is this back when there's no, like, communication except somebody sends word to go find my, go find my brother and find out if he's sleeping with the harlots? Or is this just a story, blah, blah, blah? And you wall somebody in. Yeah. yeah, well, they're just an addict. They just struggle. I mean, they're just always. What? Was he there? He wasn't there. Were you there? Do you know why they did what they did? Why did they raise their voice? Why did dad say this? What pressure was she under? What were they afraid of that caused them to grip a little hard? Like, I, I'm just saying, we make stories up. And these stories, they wall us off from the, being able to receive and, 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 and what God designed us to draw from. They're, they're brothers. They're to be strength to one another. If one falls down... The other one's supposed to kick them. No, help them up. But we believe these words and these stories. And here in churches, sometimes often the same way. We eat our own somehow. Because, well, they're not like us. What? There's one Lord, one Father, one, one baptism. Father of us all. Man. You know what he's coming back for? A glorious church. Without spot or wrinkle. Let me say it with this. Without divisions. Thank you, Lord. Sorry. I'm using your computer this morning, Ev. <laughs> and I had to find her passcode. All right. It's prayer. All right. <laughs> Sneaky. Sneaky. So don't say, here's the deal. So when you see the, all these different things, we're talking about whole families and how to have a whole family. So many times we're, we're looking at things, we're looking at symptoms, we're looking at, and we say, well, because of what I see, it's a long way off. Because of what I see, and we're addressing things by what we see, but, but as, as the family of God, they have a, and a, as a family of faith, we should be speaking differently. We should, we should, we should talk differently. Uh, so let's go, let's go here. I want you to see this, this connection, Galatians 6, 8 through 10. It says, for he that sows to the flesh uh, shall reap of the flesh corruption, but he that sows to the spirit shall reap uh, of the spirit everlasting life. Uh, he says, don't grow weary in well-doing. Uh, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. I want to just take a moment uh, to talk about reaping and sowing. So we are, we've heard this, that you reap what you sow. Okay, that's true. But the truth, the, 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 a truer statement would be you reap more than you sow, right? But let's, let's throw this one in here. You also reap where you sow. You reap where you sow. So if your son or your daughter or your husband or your wife or your family is only able to draw from the flesh, it might be because we're not giving or planting the garden where we're supposed to be planting it. If all you are planting and all you're speaking, the Bible talks about how your words, Mark chapter 4, he said, if you don't understand this, you won't understand anything in the, according to the word. That your words are seed. His word is seed. And when you sow, you, you, have the, you and I have the ability to sow. You could see this where one planted, Paul, uh, Paul planted, or Apollos planted, I watered, but God brought the increase. So there's a planting that people are to be, that they can harvest from your words. 
People can receive from your words. The question is, what are you planting? And where are you drawing your seed from so that they could harvest? So let me say, say it this way. If, if your son uh, is not doing something or your daughter is not doing all, all, all of these things, um, but, but you instead decide to call those things as that you don't see as though they were, or you decide to call out the good instead of talk about what you see here, how many of you know you're planting and it won't be long until the harvest that they have option to choose from, they're going to have to be looking for weeds to harvest instead of looking for the one piece of fruit in the garden to harvest. You, you and I have a lot to do and so, um, with what people harvest in life. Dad, mom, you know, it's interesting how, how valuable this is and how, re, how simple or, or how much of a reality this is, rather, um, where I see young people, they get a kid. You know, when they have that first kid, so often, you know what they say? We're going to get, get into church. Why? Because they realize that they are responsible for what their kid holds or what their, their kid's life. And they need to, they, they, they realize, I just, it, it's like out of nowhere, all of a sudden it's like, we need to get into church. Why? Why is that? Because there's a responsibility. Anyway, this week I had a, kind of a play on words. Um, we always train our kids to be, irre, or to be responsible. And I was thinking about this. Maybe we need to tra- become more irresponsible, E-A-R, responsible. Maybe we need to become more irresponsible. Like, in other words, what I'm hearing and not only what I'm hearing, but what I'm communicating to your ears. Do you know? Do you know that I love you? Because you're, if not, you're, you're actually, you're not being responsible. You, you and I need to be ear responsible. You and I need to be, pay attention to what our kids are hearing about themselves. Well, I'm just fat, I'm just this, I'm that, and I'm going to go find the people that like me. And this group over here, the church judges me, but this group over here, the LGBT, they accept everybody just as they are. So that's why I find community there. What is your kids hearing? What are your kids hearing? Do they, do they know your love? Do they know your, your, their value? Do your, does your wife know uh, how much you love her? Does your husband know how much he's valued? Are you irresponsible? Or are you irresponsible? You and I need to become more more aware of what we are communicating or what we're and what we're listening to. And we need to be planting uh, in from and with spirit words so that our children and our families can harvest from that place. Because he that sows to the flesh, guess what are you gonna reap? Of the flesh, corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit, that's what you're going to be able to reap, life. So I'll just say this. If there's corruption and death in your life or in your family or in your children, it's because there's words of natural origin, not God's plan. Words of flesh, corruption. Words of life, God's word. So what are we going to do? We're going to not say it's a long ways off. We're going to start planting today what we're going to harvest tomorrow not just four months. We're going we're gonna to believe and we're going to look and see our kids. We're going to look and see our marriage a long ways off. And we're going to say, hey, that's my son. Oh, it's the mailman. Hey, hey, he's coming home. God is always doing more than I think. God is teaching him something right now. God's working in my marriage. He's working on her heart. He's working on his heart. Why? Because according to, we're, 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 we have a father of faith. We're to imitate our fathers like Abraham is our father of faith, who, who he, against hope, he believed in hope, and he spoke some things that are not, what you don't see, as though they were. Yeah. Next verse. Yeah, that's it. He believed in hope. Became, uh, oh, verse 17. As it is written, I have made you a father of imagination. He is our father of God in whom you believe, the God who gives life to the dead and calls into the being those things that are not. Behind everything you see is a word. A whole family? Heaven's words. That's it. Whole family? Heaven's words. Whole family? Heaven's words. 2 Corinthians uh, 4.13. And how do you know what you're believing? How do you know what you believe? Well, it's what you're talking about. 
How do you know what you believe about your kids? Well, I just, I'm just afraid of that. I'm just afraid that he's going to one day turn out like this. I'm just afraid that you're talking to your, your spouse. You're talking to, what, what, what is that? There's a seed in here. And you're drawing from flesh or natural things. And so guess what you're doing? You're sowing. You're reaping from that. And you're sowing more of that. You're reaping from that. You're sowing more of that. You're reaping from that. Guess what you're going to have? More of that. But if you and I will take and say, you know what, I'm not looking against what I see. I'm not looking at what I see, but I'm going to grab a hold of what God says. Just like he spoke to Gideon, you mighty man of valor. I love even the idea that God calls David a man after God's own heart. David, why didn't he say, you murderer, you had someone killed, you, you, you betrayed your wife, go to sleep with this, you worthless father, you, you can't even train, your, your, your sons are trying to kill you, you're so, no, I mean, you talk about somebody who had some problems, can I say this, this here, that God's family has some problems? You know, God's first family, Abraham, or not Abraham, rather, Adam, Eve, well, who did they have? There were some family problems. Yeah. Cain and Abel, like, your, your, your kids are fighting. I just don't know. I mean, my boys are fighting, and, and they're, like, punching each other. It's like, God's family had problems, too. You know, like, no, it, it'd be, well, he might raise up and kill him in the field. No, right, sorry. Let's keep going. Am I my brother's keeper? All right, if he says that, you might want well, no. All right, we're coming to the end here. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, 5 through 9. And I, I, wanna, I just want to draw our attention to how important, again, just the, re, the sowing. Uh, and, and we didn't finish Galatians here, but he says, Don't grow weary in well-doing, for because in due season you will reap if you faint not. So many times, why do we faint? Because it's a long way off. Like if I, it's like somebody says, just five more seconds, just five. When you know, when someone sets the timer up there, when you know how far you got to push, you know, like it's amazing. Somebody can, uh, in, my, in my house, and I'm telling myself here, um, I'm, I'm the dad, okay? So that newsflash. Um, <laughs> but because I'm the dad, I have seniority. And I like to use that sometimes. And what I use that on is most often a push-up contest or something of that, that nature. So what does that mean? That means my sons, who are much more fit than I am, but I have dad strength. And it's something they don't understand until they become a dad. But really what I have is I have them go first because I have a finish line. And they don't. And when they hit 60 push-ups, and those arms are locking up, and that lack that's building up, and they're like, I don't know if I can do another one. How oh, that's good enough? Because they don't know that dad could only have gotten 64. <laughs> but if dad did 64, they would have dropped 67. Because they had a finish line. Because they had a hope. They knew what they, 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 they had something to, to shoot for, to believe for. All I'm saying is this, is, is so many times, uh, we, if you and I would just hold on to a promise of God or hold on, we would be able to stay to the end. We wouldn't grow weary because we'd be able to see, put the package up. Y'all, why, why do people buy seeds in Walmart? Which those, so many times those seeds are just, they're not even what's on the package. <laughs> Straight up. They're a watermelon, or they're, uh, but they're not that watermelon. <laughs> or they're a squash. They're not that squash. That's a, some Photoshop, blah, 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 and you wonder why you're struggling at garden. Listen, to see, well, why do they buy? Well, because somebody put them a picture in front of them. Because so, somebody put a picture in front of them. Somebody said, I'm going to go get in the dirt. This is going to be fun, they said. I'm going to pull weeds. <laughs> I'm going to endure hardship. I'm going to go get a sunburn. I'm going to get pokies in my fingers. I'm going to, whatever it might be. Also, I can get what? A picture. So, this morning, what's the picture? What's the picture? Well, I can tell you, get, get, get a heaven word. Get a God word for your family. Get a God word for your son. What, is, what are you saying about your son? What are you saying about your marriage? What are you saying? And tend that word. Tend the word uh, uh, that God would say over your marriage. Tend those words. 
Tend those words over your children. Don't talk about just what you see. Well, there's just a bunch of weeds. Yeah, it's so weedy. That's just so weedy. It's just so weedy. You know when it's just so weedy? You don't go weed. We have a garden. It's just so weedy. Now, if it's clean, you'll go out there and, oh, we'll just. But when it's just so, it's just overwhelming. Yep. So instead, let's, let's focus on the, a God word. Let's focus and let's draw from and let's sow to the Spirit. And let's begin to plant not just uh, words of the Spirit. Let's plant for our, uh, something that our kids can harvest from. Let's plant something that our families can harvest from. It might be further away. But if you'll sow today, you'll harvest those melons this summer. You'll harvest that, that, that coming back together in a, in a marriage. You'll harvest that hugging your boy or, or your daughter and laughing together. You'll have years to come to, to, to rejoice and just, they'll become not just your son, they'll become your friend. If, if you'll use God words and you begin to classify them. And now you, would you classify them as who God says they are. And now they, they begin to draw on, on that's who I am. I am I'm the righteous of Christ Jesus. I am I have a pure heart. I desire to please the Lord. I man, there's something about that. When somebody calls that out, when somebody believes in you as God does. Amen. Amen. So this is we're gonna close this this with the with the with the baptism this morning. Thank you, Lord. And uh I want to end, end with this one last story. Um, just have words stick. Now I was going to use some post-it notes this morning, but words they do stick, and um, and sometimes they stink. But words they produce more. And um, man, I, I I so many times I wish that the best words would grow easy. You know. Why, why in the garden are there not just tomatoes sprouting up everywhere? You know? Why in the garden, why, why are there not just peppers and onions and watermelons sprouting up? Why is it weeds? Why, why are the best things that seem like they have to be tended? Well, because the enemy loves to come sow seeds among. And uh, this is kind of just a funny story, but it just goes to show how um, God's word, and so this, this happened here at church, um, it's incorruptible seed. It can go through the worst circumstances. It can go, you think that nothing's happening. It's been deposited into that child, and they just don't give a flip about it. And uh, I'm just talking about believing God for fruit. And um, this was probably three years ago, maybe four years ago. And we had a problem with the septic system here at church where uh, just we had daycare and it just said the lines had been uh, so over overused but where they end up actually happening is is somebody had drove over the lines at some point and it had broke the lateral field line so it wasn't going to the field and so it was perking on the ground well for lawn mowing here at church we have a lawn mowing team and um, so if you want to mow yeah, perk, there's this um, and you Anyway, and so I was here one day, and I'm not on the lawn mowing team, um, but I was here, and I was around back, and I think I was helping pick up some garbage and, and whatnot that spring or middle of summer, really. And, um, and somebody came up to me, and they were like, oh, Pastor Nate. He said, and he's got a handful of his shirt, you know, like of tomatoes. And uh, he's like, did you plant all those tomatoes? I said, <laughs> those tomatoes? Uh, like, where did you, like, he said, yeah, man, I, the last couple of times I've been coming here, like, there's just all these tomatoes. They're growing so good. Well, sometimes we would serve chili in daycare. And uh, chili, we use tomatoes. And then those canned tomatoes that have been cooked and have went through a body and flushed down a sewer system and went through and perked on the top of the ground. There was tomatoes. A whole planting of tomatoes. And I proceeded to tell that gentleman, but um, I didn't plant those. Our kids planted those. <laughs> what? Um, well, and he's like, oh, 
He's like, I was like thinking, why is it always, it always seems to be wet here. Anyway, it's just proof. To me in that moment, I just started thinking, that's just proof. Like incorruptible seed. Like the word can be put in them, put in them, put in them, put in them, but God's watching over it to perform it. One planted one watered, but God will bring the increase. If you and I will hold on to that hope, it doesn't matter what it looks like, what it smells like, what it, all of these things can be in our lives. If you'll hold on to that, you'll be getting some tomatoes. <laughs> Talk about cool. And God brought that about. Now, did I harvest them and eat them? No. Did he put them back? Yes. <laughs> but I thought, God, God, you're amazing. God, you're amazing. And the word's working in your children. And the word's working in your marriage. And the word, if you won't pull it up, and you'll tend it, and you just hold to it. And get a God word for your family. You know, say what God says about your children and your grandchildren. Steward that. Amen? Amen. We're going to close by doing baptism this morning. And uh, exciting, exciting time. So come on up if you're getting baptized. Uh, Pastor Austin, will you come on? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Whole families swept in to the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord. So many kids. No junior Holy Spirit. Come on, buddy. Pastor Austin, we're going to wait for Pastor Austin to say, hey, this guy right here, giving your life to Jesus, I love it, I love it. Telling everybody you love Jesus, huh? I love Jesus. Come on! My name is Jordan. We got Jordan up first. You ready, buddy? So we have Logan. Let's go, bud. You love Jesus? Amen. Say this. Say, Jesus, I give you my life. Use it for your glory. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Good job. All right, next up is Trip. up his brother Trey. Right, next up we have Malachi.
Jax Howard, little man. Love you, buddy. You, uh, have you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes. You ready to be baptized, as you'd like to say? All right, let's do it. up, Mr. Robert. Mr. CJ is next. All right, next up we have Miss Tinley. Mr. Leland. Next up we have Ryder. Miss Jenna. Stephanie.
we have Miss Lily. is Mr. James. We have Miss Arabella. up we have James Laura. Hey, we have one more, but I want to take a quick second. If you have that tug on your heart, you said, hey, I want to get baptized. Maybe you didn't step up to do that today. It is not too late. If you have that tug and want to do it, what better way to go home with some wet clothes than to, to baptize and confess Jesus in front of your friends and, and church people. So if that's you, you want to come up, more than welcome to do that. We'll have extra towels and clothes for you. Uh, but if not, we're going to throw to our last one, Miss Celeste. You ready? All right. Not so fast. We have one more. Miss Tammy. Y'all give it up for Miss Tammy.
families. Whole families. You know how many children do we just, that's testimony of families declaring the word of God to their children. I believe it's going to be that way in this house. Families that are flourishing for the glory of God. The church, the pillar of truth here on this earth. Amen. Father, I thank you so much for these families here. I thank you for your anointing and your grace. Father, to raise and to train up children, to lead families, to leave a legacy of faith, to trust in the Lord with all of our heart and not just look to our understanding. We just thank you this morning. We thank you this morning for your grace upon us. You said where sin abounds, grace does that much more. So this morning, we just lift our hands to you and we just say thank you for the grace. Thank you for the grace for this race. Thank you for the grace for this leg. Thank you for the grace on these families, on these fathers and mothers and grandmothers, sons and daughters. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen. God bless you guys. Have a great week. We will see you on Wednesday night.